In this experiment, you will experimentally determine the equilibrium constant, Ka, of a proton transfer from salicylic acid to water at different temperatures. General reactions of weak acids with water involve a proton transfer from the acid to the water. This is shown by the equilibrium reaction on the slide. However, weak acids do not dissociate entirely and can be reprotonated, so an equilibrium is formed. An idea of how much an acid dissociates in solution can be gained from the Ka value. This is calculated by multiplying the concentration of products and dividing by the concentration of reactants. Water is not included in the expression because it is a liquid, giving it a concentration of 1. This lab specifically investigates the transfer of a proton from the weak acid, salicylic acid, to water. The Ka expression must therefore be changed to contain our reactants and products. Salicetic's conjugate base, which we abbreviate Sa-, is in the numerator. Salicetic acid, abbreviated HSA, is in the denominator. The initial concentration of acid, HSA, will be known. However, the amount it dissociates in solution is not known and must be found experimentally. The dissociation of the acid can be calculated using an ice table. Initially, there are no hydronium ions, or salicetic's conjugate base, in the reaction flask. Therefore, their initial concentrations are zero. This changes as salicetic acid dissociates and products are formed. The hydronium ion and the conjugate base are formed in stoichiometrically equivalent ratio to dissociation of HSA. This is put into the Ka expression as shown. The concentration of salicylic acid in the initial concentration minus some unknown amount X, and X is equal to the amount of hydronium ions, and the salicylic acid's conjugate base formed. The concentration of H3O plus, and thereby the value of X, will be found by measuring the pH using a pH meter. pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of H3O plus. So, the concentration of H3O plus is equal to 10 to the power of the negative pH. This also gives you the concentration of Sa minus, and it is equal to the concentration of H3O plus. The concentration of HSA can easily be found by subtracting the concentration of H3O plus from the initial HSA concentration. Note that the inner portion of the pH value is not significant, only the two decimal places. In the example shown, there are only two sig figs because there are only two decimal places in the pH value. Here is an example of how to calculate an equilibrium constant from pH values. The pH is measured 2.64. Ten to the power of negative two six four gives us a molarity of zero point zero zero two three. This is equal to the concentration of H three O and Sa minus. Note that this value has only two sig figs. The equilibrium concentration of HSA is found by subtracting zero point zero two three from zero point zero one zero four five expression as shown on the slide. And the Ka can be calculated as shown. Due to the fact that a weak acid is being used, Ka is expected to be low. The percent dissociation is another way to express the degree to which an acid dissociates. It is found by dividing the equilibrium concentration of hydronium ions by the initial salicylic acid concentration and multiplying by 100.
Before you begin your titration, fill a 400 milliliter beaker with hot tap water and place it on a hot plate set at one. Titrate 25 milliliter portions of salicylic acid solution with sodium hydroxide solution using phenothaline as an indicator. The amount of sodium hydroxide used can be used to determine the concentration of salicylic acid in the solution using the stoichiometric ratio of the reaction. At the end point of the titration, when the phenothaline indicator turns very light pink, moles of salicylic acid will be equal to moles of sodium hydroxide. For the next step in the experiment, you will need to calibrate a pH meter. The procedure for this, there are also instructional videos available on Moodle showing correct calibration procedures. There are two types of pH meters, so make sure you're using the correct method for your instrument. Once your pH meter is ready to go, you will measure the pH of a sample of salicylic acid stock solution at two different temperatures. First, take some stock solution in a 1 liter beaker and measure the pH at room temperature. Next, take a sample and clamp it in the hot water bath you set up at the beginning of the lab. Unplug the temperature probe from the pH meter and use a thermometer to take the temperature readings instead. Observe the pH as the acid solution heats up. When the temperature stops increasing, which should be at the temperature of around 40 degrees Celsius, record the pH and temperature of the solution. Next, prepare a diluted stock solution by pipetting 25 milliliters of the original stock solution into a 250 milliliter volumetric flask and fill the remaining volume to the mark with deionized water. Also, reattach the temperature probe to the pH meter which you disconnected for the previous step. Measure and record the pH and temperature of the diluted stock solution. Finally, in a clean, dry beaker, prepare a buffer solution by combining 50 milliliters of a 0.01500 molar sodium salicylate with 25 milliliters of stock salicylic acid to make a buffer solution. Measure and record the pH and temperature. Note that this will provide you with the initial concentration of SA- which can be used in the ice table. When you're performing the calculations for this portion of the report, don't forget that the two solutions dilute each other when they are combined. So the initial concentration of salicylic acid in the buffer is lower than the original concentration of solution. Buffers are very chemically useful because they are able to resist changes in pH. You will see much more buffer chemistry in labs this semester.